So Pal World doesn't really hold your hands much. Being an open world game means that you're pretty much free to make up your own adventure. However, this also means you can be prone to making quite a few mistakes at first. Well, nothing you've done so far is completely irreversible. However, there are many things that you can optimize, get better loot upgrades, much more efficient bases, and many other things that I personally wish I knew the first time I started playing. So let's get started by making you a lot more efficient at traversal because you can actually incorporate a sprint slide straight into a parachute glide and make that glide a lot faster to cover a lot more ground. So let me explain, whenever you come off mountains or go on a downwards path, simply press C or the equivalent on the keyboard to enter a slide while you're sprinting and then immediately jump straight into a glide. This is going to give you a lot more speed with the glider and this is going to let you reach your destination a lot faster. Compared to, for example, just using it while you're jumping, it's not going to even cover any ground, just a few meters, which is nothing. So this was one of the best ways I could cover distances before actually getting flying mounts and some of the other better variants a little bit later. Now for this, you're going to need stamina. So let's talk about the most important stats you should invest into, because right now there isn't a character respect. This is a feature that was announced for later. So until then, here is the order of the stats I invest it into starting with the stamina then a lot into hp and then alternating between weight and work speed so stamina is very important early on you don't really want to run out of breath and run at a snail space try to get at least 200 early on From that point on go balls deep into hp this is going to be very important for boss fights you don't really want to stay there and get one shotted by most boss enemies and defense is not going to be as useful so try to get at least 1000 HP by level 20. And from that point on, it's between work speed and weight. However, I found that weight is a bit more important early on as you do kinda carry stuff all the time, even in between bases as there is no other way to, for example, transfer them between bases. Let's say you have a specialized ingot farm you want to transfer some of them to your other base, you will need quite a bit of carry capacity. And work speed is the last one just because in the end stages, you might be a bit faster than your pals at completing some of the more complex projects. So this can actually help a ton to reduce that timer even more than anything else. Eventually, better options will open up for you and one of them and probably the fastest ground mount you can get early on and in the entire game basically is going to be the Dire Hall. This is especially good if you can get it with the runner or swift passive skills as it's going to give it even more speed than it has by default. I will of course follow up with some of the best passive skills to look for for every type of pal but in the meantime this is going to be the best option at this stage. And eventually you can move on to flying mounts too, I already covered a top 10 starting pal video, so totally check that one out, it's filled with information on some of the best options, both for traversal as well as combat. Now many of these settings and others too can be changed both at the start of your world creation but also while you're still playing. So whenever you load into your new world, you can always go ahead and change many of the settings like the damage you take and give, the amount of spawns and so on. So you can just press this button right here and then go into either changing the difficulty but essentially this all it is is just these parameters that you can change between the difficulties so capture rates and whatnot. And there are quite a few in there that you can change, for example, you can completely turn off the timer to incubate eggs, this is going to help a ton if you just farm a lot of them. Or you can change the number of pals that spawn by up to 3 times, so instead of having one pack of 2 enemies, it can spawn up to 6 at the same time. Or the big bosses, instead of 1, it can spawn 3 of them. But this is going to also be quite a resource hog. And there are many in here that you can also change. However, I don't recommend messing up with the damage multipliers. You can still do so, but it's just going to make the already easy game way too easy. This will not affect your gameplay at all and you can always revert back to your normal difficulty if you want to. Let's say maybe momentarily you want to farm a bunch of pals. You can bump that up and then go straight back. It's not going to affect your save file at all. Now at number 4, one of the biggest concerns I've seen a lot of you posting about is not having your pals listening to you. So there are a few things that you can actually do to improve that and one of them is to create more specialized workforces. For example, if you go with an NPC that has 
too of a broader range of work suitability it's going to not do the thing that you want to do it too often let's say for example robin quill which is still the best base handler as you can see it's suitable for a lot of work types it can plant it can do handiwork it can do lumbering however if you want to do a specific task with it like for example just transporting it's not going to do it it's going to alternate between these so instead if you create specialized bases like for example the ingot farm i already talked about you can have specialized workforce that only does one thing let's say for example i just want them to mine ingots and give me a lot of ore so i can craft it into that you can get something like a tom bat which has a very good starting into mining and doesn't really have much work suitability it can only do a bit of transporting and gathering so it's mostly going to focus on the one thing you set it to do which is going to be mining in fact this specific npc won't even do anything other than mining rarely does it do any gathering and especially transporting and you can find it all over the place at night you will find it pretty much everywhere in the starting zone you just have to look out for it now at number five another thing that completely slashes the productivity of your base is not paying attention to your pals sanity levels and this is going to eventually turn them completely sluggish even refuse working and even give other debuffs like completely broken limbs and whatnot so there are a couple of things you can do early on to fix that one of them is to completely move on from the straw beds and actually start going with better variants so when the fluffy pal bed and other better variants become available immediately create much better bedding this is going to make them sleep much better and the next day they will be a lot more productive another thing is to install hot springs this also has much better variants eventually as you level up and unlock it but this is going to be a much needed rest that they can get and improve their sanity levels and essentially from this point on it's just a matter of having enough resources for them to eat so berries at first can be pretty good but it's not going to fill them much so you will want to look eventually into better crops as that's going to let them regenerate a lot more of that hunger a lot better with just one quick session of eating so in this case for example you can totally go with wheat and create some really amazing foods and we're going to talk about foods in just a little bit it's something that is going to be important for you too but uh, there are other things you can do to increase productivity for your base and one of them is the monitoring stand that you can unlock at level 16. so this is going to give you the possibility to choose between different working conditions normal is the default one but you can make your pals work much harder and even super hard at the cost of sanity and hunger depletion but for short periods of time this is going to increase the productivity of your base to insane levels they will immediately do those tasks without any worry they will move between them much faster and this means the production is going to increase a lot more so yeah you can totally go full on ussr style on them but yeah as you can see their sanity levels and hunger levels are completely plummeting as a result it doesn't even take half of a day for that to happen in fact it's so bad that the cows took a break from grazing to actually eat they literally took a break from eating so that they can eat you can't make that up so yeah just try not to be as crazy with those working conditions now, like I said earlier, you will want to have a specialized base. If you want your workforce to do something specific, like creating a certain element, a material, or something that is used in many areas of the game. However, if you want to do the other way around and have a general kind of base that does everything, but on a longer period or time scale, then you will need a handyman and there are many options that you can start with of course early on the cativas are going to be pretty good because they have all of this into a planting they can do handiwork they can also mine and transport but eventually there are better options as you level up so once you get the cativas the next one is going to be the tansies these have even more abilities however they kind of lose a bit on not being able to mine elements you can of course go with a more specialized bower for example and just have them handle that for you but by far the best eventually are going to be these robin quills as you can see they can handle everything around your base so a couple of them three or maybe even four can work wonders because then they will start kind of specializing their work a bit if one of them is doing transporting the others will see that so they will start maybe doing handiwork and 
um yeah just craft objects for you in fact this i found to be a very good option because the handiwork is level two so this means they can craft things for you a lot faster this brings us to tip number 10 and if your pals don't do the projects you want them to do you can actually assign them manually by simply lifting them up and then throwing at that object slash location they want to do that work into so let's say for example you want to craft items but you don't want to do it on your own because you want to do something else you can grab one of these if they didn't do it automatically throw them at that workbench and they will do it for you the same goes with farming let's say for example you want somebody to farm honey for you you can grab them throw them inside of a ranch slash pan and they will stay there generally and do that for you if they move out it means that it's overcrowded or they just want to go in and take a break now at number 11 you're going to want to pay special attention to the passive skills your pals have and generally this means you're going to either have to catch a lot more of the same until you get ones with the desirable passive skills or breed them like how i already covered it in yesterday's breeding and ranking up video again totally check that one out it's very informative on how to get the best possible results but pay special attention to the ones that are relevant to the task you put them to. So for example, for a worker such as the Robin Quill, a, well in this case, workaholic trait will help a ton because it reduces how much it spends its sanity while working. But also pay attention to the negative traits. You really want to flush these one out. In this case, I have the workaholic level 3, which is really good, but unfortunately, it also comes with unstable and destructive, which completely negates that and even exceeds it. So the sanity in reality on this pal actually drops a lot faster than the usual and this also goes with all the other pals if you want a swift mount you're going to look for runner and swift if you want something that does a lot of damage you're going to want muscle head and ferocious so again a bigger video will drop soon on all the best passive skills to have by the way, quick tip, if you want to catch a lot more pals, then you're going to need a lot of those spheres. Early on, you can actually get the default blue spheres very easily by just using Vixies inside of a pan. Again, I covered this before, but they will give you tons of them. I got like a thousand easily without ever touching any crafting, at least until level like 20 when better options like the Mega Spheres opened up. Plus, they also dig up for a lot of arrows. So again, I never needed to craft any of those they just handle everything for me early on. But one other thing you're not going to want to do is spend a lot of time there just throwing balls at enemies and them just escaping them. And there's a good reason why that is happening. One is that you need better spheres, which comes by just upgrading them from the tech tab. Second of all, you will need these lift monk effigies. Quite a lot of them, actually, as this will let you upgrade your catching rate to much better levels. So by far the best method to farm these is during nighttime because you can literally see these green dots from literally across the map as far as the map loads you will see them all over the place and it's much easier to collect a lot of them keep in mind that the cost will constantly increase so you will need more and more for the later stages like dozens for each level and if you found the video useful until now totally leave a like on it it would very much be appreciated but moving on to the next tip use repair kits yes i neglected this for the longest time yes it's just a level 3 unlock but repair kits are going to help you after raids happen or whenever any of the objects in your bases start deteriorating so you will oftentimes see that they will need repairing while well, these are the repair kits that you need to bring them up to full condition you don't really want to have broken stuff in the base that reduces its productivity or just makes it worse so constantly try to have everything repaired in your base it's very fast and very easy to craft them this brings us at the 15th tip on the list and that is shinies so shinies are special very rare variants of the usual pals that you find out in the wild do not confuse these with the boss slash alphas they are completely different and what makes them different is well two things one they are much larger than their normal counterparts second they come with the lucky stat now lucky stat is really good because it already gives you a bonus both to damage as well as productivity However, it does one more thing, and that is providing a rare skill, usually boss level skill. 
So let me give you a few examples. For example, this low level Kativa got a dragon cannon ability, normally a dragon skill that you can't even find on this type of fell, compared to normal Kativas that usually get, well, neutral type of attacks and sometimes earth abilities. Or this shiny loop moon, which on top of its dark abilities, also got this insane Ignis rage. Normally, I've seen this only on bosses. It kind of fills the whole area with these fiery eruptions that can deal quite a lot of damage and there are plenty more like you can get for example sheep with lock on lasers which again i've mostly seen on electric bosses and plenty other examples this is how you're going to get those amazing stats right away now the next tip is that you're going to want to cook your food the starting berries won't be enough to fill you you will need to consume like tons of them and for your higher level pals it's going to be even bigger than that so that's when you want to start cooking using either the campfire or even a cooking pot as you level up but even baking the berries is going to make them a lot more efficient than their default counterparts and it doesn't take too long for that to happen it's going to fill you much faster and it's also more useful for your pals but eventually once you start also placing down wheat plantation other possibilities open up including ones that use that flower so especially so a good option early is going to be the jam filled bun in this case it's one of the first dishes that also gives you a bonus stat 10% more to defenses a very good option to have and i highly recommend it plus it feels you a lot better than all the others until now building up upon this another thing to do to automate your food eating is to yeah unlock and create feeding pouches you can start with these ones like at low level but eventually you can unlock all of these slots below your character screen which is the place you can slot in different types of foods so that both your character as well as your team members automatically eat and replenish their hunger without you having to do it manually from the screen every single time so there are multiple slots and they all have different timers which eventually means by the time you reach the fifth one you're going to have so much in here that you never have to worry about ever consuming them from the inventory it's going to all happen manually plus it's a neat way to kind of just organize your inventory a lot better but now that you've improved your base, character and your pals, it's time to bring this all together into a big adventure and that brings us to dungeons. There are a lot of them across the map, you'll see them by their distinctive entrance which is usually by the side of mountains or caves and when you get close to them it's actually a dark area and once you go right next to it you will see a pop off to enter the dungeon plus a countdown timer before it expires so inside you will find a ton of enemies syndicate enemies plus a lot of pals so you will get a ton of xp from fighting these also mats and also a lot of xp from capturing all the pals inside which i recommend always doing because you never know when you get one with very good passive skills there's also going to be a boss room and inside of this room you're going to find specimens that typically are much more rare in the wild or you need to go in much higher level places to find them so you can get them from much early plus there are ads around them which means you can get at least like three four five even six of the same specimen including the boss this means you can also use it for ranking or even breeding purposes and once you defeat that at the end of that boss room you will find another room with two of these boxes usually loot chests that contain special items including accessories so for example i got a really interesting pendant right here which helps me with the working speed but there are others that provide even better bonuses at higher levels which is why dungeons are always going to be worth it now another reason why dungeons are worth it is because you will also find several other chests one usually per each of the rooms which can give you a whole bunch of resources however the most important are going to be the schematics so let's talk a bit about schematics from this point on schematics you can get from literally any chest both out in the open world and especially so in dungeons and they usually give you access to technologies that you normally need to unlock in your technologies tab and not only that it gives you much rare variants of those for example this pelt armor i did not need to even unlock it because i just got a schematic for it anyway but you can also get higher grade versions of those for example you can get the same pelt armor but with a better rarity like i got a rare it can however go to epic and i believe legendary too so these are going to be very good and you can craft them right away 
Now, as you likely noticed, a lot of these require ancient civilization parts, which are these kind of scroll looking circular things that you actually get both from completing said dungeons, but especially from defeating or capturing alpha bosses. And one of the best ways to farm for these is just looking around the map and see wherever you have these boss encounters, either out in the world, but especially inside of specialized dungeons. So they have usually an hour timer. You can obviously see that timer right next to the entrance. So that's a good indicator of how you can spot these and how to do them on repeat. It's one hour in-game time, by the way. So you will have to play for one hour before it resets. Not sure if you leave it overnight, if it's going to help. But uh, it's a good way to farm these and you can get a ton of them. And like I said, I was able to craft a whole bunch of stuff that needed it. It's always going to require one of these parts for the schematics. By the way, on the combat side, you can pretty much dodge any incoming attack, both with your character, but especially with your pals. So with your character, you can just press control or the equivalent on the keyboard and essentially get out of harm's way. The hitboxes are pretty easy in this game, so you can just jump out of pretty much any attack as long as it's not full on AoE and you're still in its range. But for most of them, it's very easy to do this. It's even better if you use aim because you can do this side sort of stab that's even better and gives you a bit more control. However, for your pals, it's even better because you can use your spheres at your advantage. So whenever there's an enemy charge attack, that will deal a lot of damage for your pal you can just summon them back before that hitbox gets hit and then resummon it again as you don't have any cooldown penalty on it so you can literally do this on repeat and whenever they get hit or about to get hit you can summon them back completely avoid damage and then resume on fighting and from this point on i do have a number of other tips that you can find useful one of them is that you can actually still throw pokeballs at full hp pals and if you take them by surprise they will still get captured in them well of course it's going to be dependent on your capture rate plus the type of ball that you use but if you have like hundreds upon hundreds of ball spheres and you want to just like throw them and rain hell down on enemies and capture a big group for example you can totally do that and it's totally going to work especially if you do want a certain type of species for higher grade and larger creatures it's going to be a lot more difficult and sometimes impossible but still somewhat doable another tip is for dying and there are different penalties depending on the difficulty but on the normal if you die you're just going to drop all of your gear you're not going to lose anything however this is something that you're going to want to take into account so that you never carry stuff that you actually don't need so don't carry the gold or crafting components if you really need them just keep them at your base however you can still go back and take back the dropped items by just going back at the x the red x on the map as well as the big line which is going to um, show you and indicate where you have your inventory you can collect it back and then simply re-equip it um, but uh, if you play on higher difficulties, this is going to change so you can even lose some of the gear, sometimes permanently if you apply those settings. So definitely pay attention to the one that you want to play with the most. And again, in the world setting, you can change this to never drop any gear at all. It's a matter of preference. For the eggs, if you did not apply an incubation speed reduction, you can reduce the speed naturally on the normal difficulty by keeping it close to a heat source in this case a campfire can improve its speed by 50 up to 100 percent so you can complete this twice as fast as the usual if you play on the normal difficulty setting very helpful if you want to farm them and not cheat your way through it and finally pay attention to creature drops creature drops are indicated right here at the possible drop section when you check them in the pal deck and this is going to be important because you will need different drops for different purposes like crafting certain items so to give you an example bones are very useful to use in the medicine bench but also later on to create cement so whenever you find a creature with bones try to kill it because it's going to be needed later on and there are many more like for example if you want to craft muskets and other stuff that needs the high quality pal oil again pay attention to the ones that drop it like earliest i believe is the woolly pop you can find it very close to the starting location so it's very easy to get a ton of this and craft the items that you need and especially later on once you need the higher level spheres like the hyper and like the ultras and legendaries again cement is going to be important so those bones will help a ton to capture higher grade pals 
Anyway, this is pretty much it with the video. In the meantime, totally check out some of the others I made, including some of the best spells to get early, as well as one of the best specialized farms that you can create, including the best spot early on. Plus, if you found this video useful, a thumbs up and a subscribe would really be appreciated. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.